Hello everyone. Uh, the Daft Man had uh, posted a video and uh, he was in lieu of uh, building another type of counter in reference to the calculator counter that uh, I've made a video on. And he's using one of these uh, walk counters and I thought that it was such a good idea that I would go ahead and build one and uh, hook it up to the coil machine and show you how that works just to make sure that everything is going to work fine between this unit and the coiling machine. Mine's a little bit different. Um, when I open up the, the back of it here, um, it's a little bit different construction than the one that he shows, but still works the same. As the fulcrum comes down, it makes contact. It makes contact on these two little pins, which makes it great to be able to solder to. So all we have to do is make contact on those two pins, and then as the little fulcrum arm comes down, then it changes the counter. So just like his, it will continue to keep counting. And then um, just the reset button on this will reset the entire unit. We may still have to have our reset switch, but I'm not sure yet. I'll know that once we get it all hooked up and everything. And then I'll show you uh, the rest of it, and I'll show you an operation with the motor actually turning and how it all looks. Okay, so what I've done is the first step is I've removed the unnecessary parts. This was a stabilizer for the rocker arm, and that's the spring that comes off of it. So that leaves us just with an empty body and our two pins that I'll solder some wires to. Okay, and here you can see where I've soldered those two wires onto those two contacts on the back. The other step that I did was I went ahead and I drilled a hole in the side of our case where we're going to run our lead wires out so that when we uh, make the completed unit, once we screw the back back on, our wires will come out the side and that will make it so we can attach this firmly down where we need to. And then every time our numbers. So it works very well. Works just like in the Daft Man video. And I'm going to go ahead and get this all set together and uh, wired into our motor unit. The one thing that I do know is you will have to have the set switch um, in testing. When you zero it out, because of how the switch contacts are inside the motor, remember they always make contact until that little breaking point on the motor. So when you reset it, it will automatically reset this to a number one. So as long as you always subtract one turn, then you're just fine and you don't have to have the reset switch. So I noticed on this piece that the reset button just reset it. And so I took it kind of apart and was looking at it. And this is the circuit board that's behind it. And I was thinking to myself, well, if you forget to start this, how do you set it for timing? And you can set a momentary switch up so that you can just push it on the outside and attach it to the wires. But I wanted mine to be, it, to be all self-contained. So I'm going to add a micro mini momentary switch in and this switch is going to wire into this hole that I drilled in which was actually used for the old mechanical linkage that used to touch on these contacts. And so I'm able to wire this in there and then that way I will have a manual counter on top of the counter that's going to come off of the wire control unit from the wire coiler so that you can manually set, say you want to start at 15 windings because you left for the night and you came back and you need to manually set the windings so that you can restart from where you left off and you wrote down on a piece of paper or you just remembered that you had 15 windings well you'll be able to push this momentary switch 15 times and that will set you up for how many turns that you already have on your spool that you left from that night and came back to. Okay. And here's the manual set switch that's coming through the body, as you can see. So we have our reset and our manual counter. And then, as you can see on the back, what I did was I just ran that micro switch underneath the board, insulated it so it wasn't going to make any contact with the wire paths that are already there. And then you have the upper contact and the lower contact that we will wire to these two contacts. Very simple. Just two wires coming over making contact there. Okay. And here you can see those two contact wires that have been soldered on here um, from our micro switch. We've got the one wire running to the one side of our poles and the other from our micro switch running to our other. When I flip that over, you can see, uh, as you can see, if I push this manual set switch, 
you'll see that every time I push it, it changes our counter. So now we have a manual set switch, and then when we push our reset button, it'll reset it so that you can manually count up if necessary. So I thought that was a good addition, and it's all on the small little unit. So you can see the units may be an inch and a quarter by about an inch and a half, so it's a very small little readout. Works quite well. Okay, so here we can see it all connected to the motor, and as the motor turns, it does go up in timing. Now the one thing that I have found is if I increase the motor speed, it will stop counting. And that's because the contacts are making contact too fast for the circuitry inside of this unit to uh, correctly operate. So if we turn this back down to a slow speed, then it will start counting again. So it's really good at a slow speed, as you can see how slow the coil is going right now. But if we increase speed, it will stop counting. And that speed right there stops it from counting. Okay, so we know that this will only work at a very slow RPM because of the type of contacts we have inside the motor. So to get this to work any differently, we're going to have to use either different contacts or operate at a very slow speed. Now, I still have our calculator hooked up, so I'm going to open that. I'm going to turn off our motor. I'm going to turn this on. So we have our zero. I'm going to go one plus one. And so we can see it there. I'm going to go ahead and close the door. And then I'm going to turn on our motor. Turn that on. Then we have our two, three, and then four, five. And as I increase motor speed, that's as fast as our motor will go. And you can see that the calculator still keeps up with that. So you can see that we're going at a very fast speed and the calculator is still able to keep up with that. So out of this test, if you're going to be spinning a very slow coil, then the smaller unit will still work. Um, outside of that, it does have a minor flaw in the speed at which it's able to um, calculate. Okay. So I think the best use of this unit would be as an electronic foot counter. And the reason why is because to count the feet would be going a little bit slower and I think the circuitry would work very well for that. And we'll leave our calculator for calculating out the turns because of how fast the response has to be for every turn because it is a very quick contact method for that. And how I think we could do that is basically the same way that I use the um, foot wheel here to calculate out our foot. But instead of having a wheel secondary, we could mount a wheel directly onto this and uh, just set it so that it's far enough away so that every time it comes around a foot of wire that would come through our support all the way over to where our spool would be so that when it measures a foot there that our wheel is large enough to make a contact. Now we could use a micro circuit contact, we could use a magnetic contact, we could use um, a simple cog contact, lots of different contacts for that. I'm going to see which one's going to work the best. And I think that's going to be the best mod for this unit here. So you'll make a digital foot reader. And I think that'll work really well. I'm going to go ahead and, and experiment around with that and record as we go. So that when I get something that works really well, then I can post that. And uh, everyone will be able to take advantage of that as well. So I hope that uh, that'll be a good use for this counter because I really like its idea. I really like its design. And it may be that this particular unit isn't a name brand. It's just really cheap. It may be that it doesn't uh, have the circuitry in it to operate as fast where maybe a name brand, one for maybe $5 would. Um, but then we're getting into a cost issue. Where is it cheaper to buy a calculator or this? Um, that's going to be left up to, uh, to everybody who decides to build one. But I'm going to try making a digital foot counter with this, and maybe I can alleviate kind of some of this big bulk that's right here from the manual counter. The only thing that's not going to show is our inches. So it'll only show feet, which may not be too bad, um, as long as we know how many feet are potentially on our coil, then we'll be able to uh, guesstimate that out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and rework that up, and I'm going to experiment around with that, and I'll get back with you and post some new videos once I find out uh, if that's going to work for this unit as well. Thank you.